Hey everybody, welcome back to the question and answer period of wrong end of the snake. Uh, JD John Douglas has graciously agreed to come yeah. back and uh, hang out with us for a, a bunch more questions. Um, we were just talking about how uh, it goes so quickly um, and we get so many questions uh, that we just don't have time during the normal hour to ask all of them. Uh, but Tater, I know you have a couple. Um, why don't you ask away? Okay, well, this wasn't the direct question, but I'm going to preface it a little different. Your, your most iconic piece of art you have out there, we all know what that is. Why don't you talk a bit about it? And that's what they're kind of asking about is the Billy guitar. Yeah, I think it's, it's, odd, it's, it's ironic that I'm kind of the drum, known as the, the drum guy, and I, but I think my, my, I think probably most iconic piece is the Billy guitar that I did for Joe Perry, which I did now. 20 years ago. Wow. Uh, long, huh? Yeah. That thing's uh -huh. been seen everywhere, by the way. Yeah. That yeah. And that's why, I mean, first of all, guitars, they get more glory than drummers anyway, guitar players. <laughs> yeah. So it's by nature that, of that, but, and it's for a guy like Joe Perry, number, you know, number two. And, you know, fortunately he, he loves it and they're still together, <laughs> you know, so that matters. Yep. That uh, does help. But I tell you what, the, I love this story because this, this again, this is like the Merv story. Um, and I'll try to make it quick. So I painted a drum kit for Frank ZZ Top in 1993. It was a white drum kit and I painted what else? Black and white portraits of all these supermodels all over the kit. We just called it the supermodel kit. Yeah. It wasn't really, it really wasn't for a tour. They used it, they used it at a Harley gig and a couple of one-offs with Clapton or something, but, but it's a great big Frank kit black and white supermodels. And so my first teching gig with them, when their album came out, Antenna, we went to New York City and did the Letterman show. And Frank's playing a, like a four or five piece version of this kit. And who's sitting in with a band that week, all week, but Joe Perry. Sitting in with the world's most dangerous band, you know, back awesome. when Letterman was. There. Yep. So he wasn't the music, ZZ's a musical guest, Joe's yep. just playing with the band. Right. So Jim Service is his guitar tech. And I, you know, I kind of remember meeting him or anything, but this is 1994, January of 1994. And I don't know how he tracked me down, but years later, six years later, Joe's like, hey, I want a portrait of, of my wife painted on this guitar. I guess he says it to Jim. And Jim goes, I think I know the guy. And somehow he tracked me down because I hadn't worked with him before or since. And he tracked me down in like around 2000 and said, Joe wants, you know, so that's how that gig. So my, my door into my foot in the, in the Aerosmith door was actually through Joe Perry painting that guitar. And then once Joe had the guitar painted and then Joey saw it and then I painted some drums for Joey and I still didn't tech for Joey for until 13 years after that. Wow. And every, every time I would be a guest of Aerosmith, I'm a guest of Joe Perry's because of the guitar and, and Joe laughed last year when I started playing with him, he's like, I have you in my phone as John Douglas, like famous painter. He goes, now I got to add drummer yeah. to me as the painter. You know, he's just, I'm the guy that painted his Billy guitar. So who knew, you know, uh, almost 20 years after I painted that guitar that I would, you know, end up play, playing the Grammys with him. Right. You know? Yeah, and so then anyway, the, the, the long story, but no, 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 it's a it's a great story. Yeah, that's uh, great. Connections, connections. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing is that I wanted to bring up is that there's all this weird incestuous relationship yeah. that happened that we all build over the years, and and um, you know, like next week's guest, Jim Service was kind of the door open door to that situation, which then led to that's that. Right. Um, so, uh, um, especially when you're recognized for something else, he's like the painters playing the drums tonight. You know I mean? <laughs> I know. It's hard for somebody when they see you as one thing to see you as something else sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, absolutely. I get that all the time. Even as an artist, it's like, okay, you know, okay. So yeah, I see you, I see you painted that rose, you painted roses, but I need a tulip painted. So I'm going to find somebody else. So I'm like, well, I can paint a tulip too. That's kind of like that. They, 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 people are sometimes like this, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, you could. 
Yeah. I remember you're, uh -huh. the drum, you're the you're the guy that paints drums, but can you paint a guitar? I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's another chunk of wood. What's the difference? I remember yeah. an old Eddie Van Halen interview. He he said something about someone was questioning him about playing, I guess, Spanish Fly, qu questioning about playing acoustic. Like, oh, you can play acoustic too? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got yes. a guitar. Yeah. Man. I'm Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, of course I can. <laughs> of course Watch I can. This. I can play anything, but yeah, I can play that too. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, Great now, story on that. Every every guy that dares to um, become, you know, who you are, some somebody huge, having these amazing experiences with all these bands, has had failures along the way. Um, because anybody that has tried to be b as big um, as they can be is, of course, not going to succeed every time. Uh, do you have a do you have a, like a, a moment? What's your biggest failure of your career? Do, do you remember a moment and maybe what you learned from it? Remember. I try not to remember. Well, I know. But I mean, you know, like I try to remember something that happened to me and learn from that experience and be like, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, like for me, all right, I'll tell you what mine is, and you were there, was Van Halen with David Lee Roth, like, you know, totally, I don't know what his deal was, but uh, with, everything was fine. He does. <laughs> yeah, everything was fine uh, with the other guys in the band, and then he shows up, and he, it's crazy town. But, um, you know, that was a failure in my career because I wanted to work for that band. I wanted to go on tour with that band. Um, but what I learned from it is, is communication and how, like, I, I look back on it and I said, well, I made, there were three big mistakes I made right in a row um, that, uh, you know, kept me from that, you know, experience. So I don't know. Is there something you can think of or not? It's fine if you don't. I don't think I have. I mean, I've had plenty Sunbird of- Sunbird right? Meg Ryan? Yes. I mean, that's, <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, that artistically, yes, that absolutely is. Um, that fortunately I was able to salvage, but I mean- um, I almost consider, I have too many to even relate because I certainly artistically, especially with the drums and stuff, I try, I really try not to repeat myself. You know, I think, okay, people are coming to me because they want something unique. Right. Yeah. They're coming to me because you know, you know, so a lot of times I get, well, I love everything you do. Just do something cool. I'm like, yeah, no, I know better, you know, uh, cause what I think is cool today, you might not, but, but, but I try to do things that I haven't done, whether, you know, whether it's uh, just in a, with a paintbrush or, you know, modifying, uh, you know, cutting some, you know, uh, even like the fridge kick, I didn't, uh, you know, but in the, on that same kit, if you look at the, that Van Halen kit from 07, 08, where the, the primary kick drums are 26s, and then on the outside of each of those, it looks like this tumor, so there's another drum yeah, that's this, falling yeah, out yes. of this drum. Right. So this, this was Al's idea. And of course, I'm here in Texas. He's there. So he kind of vocally kind of tell me, I think he do a, do a sketch and message me or whatever. So I'm like, OK, you know, so I'd never cut a chunk out of a bass drum like that. And um, so things like that. I mean, not not that necessarily a mistake was made, but certainly um, I don't know what I'm in for when it, when you when you cut it out, because it doesn't it doesn't. It doesn't stay like this. No, I was gonna say, it has no stability anymore. Yeah, you take yeah. a big chunk out of it. And yeah. then I'm like, oh, okay. And then it happened last year when I was building the, the ZZ Top 50th anniversary kit. I, I wanted to put these whiskey barrels on the front of the kick drum. And I, but I only wanted like half being revealed. So I'm like, well, I'll just get a, a whiskey barrel and I'll just cut it in half. I'm like, and so I did that. And I'm like, guess what? Whiskey barrels aren't designed to be. Cut in, half. cut in half and the kind of same thing was like you cut in half and they just went Come on. it just exploded because <laughs> it's under all this tension yeah yeah so i make mistakes pretty regularly I, um you know i i yeah yeah know, that's fine yes, i mean that's how I, we learn i just want to point out to people that are watching this you know it's not everything is not you know uh rainbows and bunnies you know sometimes uh, sometimes we make a lot of mistakes and and our job uh, is our job is is to is to uh, adapt and uh, and problem solve because yeah, every yeah. day we're like in a different venue in a different city in a different part of the world a different country different and we, and we we're we're thrown different obstacles uh and our job is to try to do everything the same as it was yesterday at the you know and yeah. so we, I think to be successful, 
at any given job on the road, you have to be a problem solver and totally. a think outside of the why box. Why does it sound different today? Well, everything's different. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Including you. Everything is different. Including you. Everything has yes. changed. Everything is different. Yes. Yeah. So uh, an inquiry about the uh, Gibson headstock behind you, is that uh, oh. working on it, finishing yeah. it? Uh, current, no, current? just getting started. Just, just getting, getting started. started. And, you know, I, I, I rarely do inanimate objects. You know, I like to do people. And I know why, because I, I probably started that like two or three weeks ago. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't, I'm not really, uh, it's not for anybody. It's just because I, I took a bunch of pictures of, uh, that's one of Joe Perry's, Les Paul's one of vintage and it's, it's really cool in person. It's got, a, it's all nicked up and it's, the lacquer's all checked. And, you know, to me, it's just got all this personality and, and, and looks cool, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to finish it cause I don't give up, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what that is. It's just going to be a, a painting. So where does, so, um, okay, go ahead. With, with your artwork, I was just curious, like where, you're creating a piece of art, but a lot of times it's coming from a photo that you've taken or like where, where does most of the inspiration for painting a rock star come from? Is it a, a photo that's been taken or is it something that you see? I mean, where, do, where does that come from? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, I have painted some, some of my Van Halen stuff for instance, is from photos that I took early on because I was just a fan and I stuck my camera in and, and I have some good shots of them. So, but most of the time, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have a camera that shows. So if sometimes I'll know the photographer and I'll get permission, but most of the time I pull images from the web and I do a Frankenstein. I build my own images and um, I'll take, you know, uh, like I did the, uh, I did when I was with Bon Jovi, I did one of, of JBJ and, you know, to me, I'm kind of like, well, he was the poster child for the rock and roll eighties, you know, the coolest hair on the block and all that stuff. So I'm going to paint that, you know, I don't know what he's going to think about it, but I'm going <laughs> to do that. So, uh, so I took a, a, what I thought was a really good picture of him in the, in the, in that hair. And then, but another torso picture, I like the outfit that he wore. So I do it in Photoshop. I do it, and build it to where uh, I think it looks good. It's kind of the, the, the pose that I'm looking for and hopefully it looks natural. And then I'll save it as a, a JPEG and I, I'll print it out and then I paint from that. You know, Do you we, blow it all the way up and then bring it back? Yeah. Take it all the way <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what I do. I usually, I use usually two or three or sometimes four different photos and I'll build the pose. Like I have a Bono picture where I had, I like the look of him and then I got a jacket from another photo and I literally got part of the shoulder and the arm and the mic from another, ah. it was like four photos and I make them all. And if you saw what I worked from, it's pretty rude. I'm not a great Photoshop artist. I'm just right. looking for proportions and then I can fix everything when I paint it, the lights and the, you know, to make it to where it does look like it's supposed to be that way. It, it looks really rudimentary cut and paste within Photoshop. I, I get a little bit better. Good enough for me to visualize that. Yes, that's, that's what I want to paint. That's what it looks like. And that's, that's what I do 99% of the time. Wow. That's awesome. I never knew that, that you had a Frankenstein yeah, version know, of, yeah. of stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Now, but so I do that for a few, a few reasons. Number one, I'm, I want to respect the rights of, of the photographer. If I don't know them or any way to, you know, I, I don't want to copy just a photograph. Number two, nowhere does that image exist. Right. except for on my canvas. So like guys like me that paint celebrities or whatever, uh, we all get our resource photos from the same place. I can go and do, do a Google, Google search of, of Keith Richards, whatever. And I can tell, you know, I can almost tell you, okay, they got that, they got that photo from, you know, classic rock magazine uh, issue. You know, we all paint from the same stuff and I'm, I try to be different much like, you know, when I started painting my drums, I just like, I just wanted my drums to look unique. So I'd like my canvases to look unique above and beyond whatever style I may or may not have. I want like the image that I do is not available anywhere else, you know, unless somebody copies my painting, which is, which could happen, but you won't find a photo identical That's to awesome. what I'm, yeah. you know, so. Very cool. Now I wish you, you were, you, when you design these custom kits <clears throat> and you, when you're working as a drum tech, you, you'd love to come up with creative ways for the microphones to be mounted and 
customizing stands so that you, know, you don't need mic stands covering everything up and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I was always wishing you'd come up with the, the John J.D. Douglas uh, version of some sort of clamp or hidden mic this or this and that because it's so – it's it's definitely needed. I know, you know, we got the, the Kelly shoe, which is great. You use that a lot, right? Yeah. And um, who's who's the guy we use? Uh, the Randall May. His Randall stuff's May. fantastic, right? But that's yeah. ma- mainly kick drum. But, you know, we need – Hi hats, overheads to be hidden, and all that kind of stuff. I always was hoping, and, and the drum companies seem to be getting away from mic holders. Maybe there's no money in it. You know, maybe you can become a multi hundred air from it. But that's what I've always wanted. <laughs> yeah, hundred air. Well, now I feel like I've let you down, Tater. <laughs> well, well, I feel like I kind of feel like I mean, uh, DW pretty much dominates the hardware market, and for good reason. I mean, they kind of don't leave any stone left unturned. You don't you, if you buy it piece of DW hardware, you, you're not, you typically not want for anything. You don't, it comes with multi, with a memory locks and you know, it's thought well all the way through. So their, their mic adapters, uh, I pretty much use it everywhere. I, I, I'm like, I haven't really seen the need for that. I agree with you on, on the, on the clips and I don't know the model numbers or stuff, but you know, there's, those usually are like, ah, it's kind of okay, but boy, if it could only just do yeah. this. Yeah, it's never great. Do that, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Um, so maybe I should work on that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's always, from our perspective as sound guys, we're always like taking the janky stand that some sound company is like, you know, beating up every single night, yeah. you know. I know as a drum tech, you guys are like super careful about, you know, putting things away and having it go there. So when yeah. we find someone like yourself that has some custom mounts and stuff, it's, it's really super cool for us. I'm um, crazy, you know, anal about that stuff. I mean, like I want the kit, even if I, even if it's not like custom paint or anything, to me, the drum kit is, is a sculpture to me. Yeah, that's right. You know, I want to get the stuff clean. I want to, I want to see the drummer. I want to see the drums and, you know, in that order. And, uh, so yeah, I'm like, um, I try to take all that into consideration, even even if I'm just dealing with stock gear. Like I want to get this stuff, get the stuff there, as as simple and as clean as possible. You know, I'm, I look at it from different, from three or four different angles, artistically, and then as a player, you know, obviously that 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 whatever it is needs to be right where it needs it to be every night. You know, so yeah. that's gonna be consistent. And then okay, well, how can I get it there? to where it looks cool, it looks artistic, getting that symbol where he wants it. And then and then I look at it as from a drum tech angle, it's like, okay, how am I gonna set that up and tear it down every night consistently? And what's the what's the cleanest way that to for it to break down and fit in a road case and you know, the minimal amount of, you know, tearing things and pulling boomed arms out, you know, I'm, because ultimately we're all lazy. Yeah. <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> but, you know, no, the you know it, the out, and yeah. we want the out to be quick, yeah. quick, 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 quick. So I try to make it a one man job. And, you know, so I, I, I have a mental checklist of things that I try to accomplish when I'm in that, in that mode. Of, so do you get a little, little bit nervous when some sound guy you don't know comes up with like three or four or five pound weighted mic bases and they're getting near the drums? It's like yeah, easy. Yeah. To... Or with an LP claw. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh. Clap <laughs> on something. No. This is not Holiday Inn. Yeah. No offense to LP. The right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah. Watch the drums. I just know on that Brent Fitz kit, you had – when you looked at that kit closely, you had so many hidden details in that and everything hidden on that painting of, of all the skulls. It was such a great, great piece of artwork that when you really looked at it close and studied it, you could and find all and found all those details, how much work you must've put into that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's funny to, you know, uh, again, of those uh, three really high profile uh, sitting in with the bands, you know, I, I painted each one of those kits, so it's like it was so uh, weird that that happened. Because that's not always the case. I don't I don't paint every kit that I I tech for, you know, and, and vice versa. So, but those instances I, I painted them all, you know. So it was it was weird. Now they're not necessarily set up for me, but there's a big part of that. It's like I spent a lot of time 
with them with those drums before intimate relationship before, with that drum yeah, kit. yeah before yeah. they ever were on a stage you know yeah. I spent a lot of time thinking about how they were going to be set up what they were going to look like and physically a lot of time with these drums yeah so it's it's there's a special relationship <laughs> so so real quick before we run out of time yes, uh, apple doesn't fall far from the tree how about how about the kids the kids band give them a little plug what's going on yeah my my son jake is a killer drummer and his band is called the uh, junk bunny they signed with uh, lava republic hmm, 2018 when he was 16 years old so everybody in the band is a three-piece like power trio from from here in texas and um so they recorded their debut album last year with howard benson produced um there in la and um so obviously everybody's pivoting in the music business, you know, so they end up, they, they recorded the full album. So, but they released a four song EP in October. And uh, then they had two tours lined up for this year. And they were about a week or 10 days away from their first big tour, US, Canada and COVID hit. And, you know, I'm like, uh, I, I obviously, they were crushed for good reason, as we all were. Uh, so, and it got, it got uh, rebooked and of course then that got put, canceled and, and so they uh, just released another four song EP um, and the single for that was um, another summer song. So they did a video here, homemade basically because that's what you gotta do. And it that's what you do. got great reaction, it looks killer and the, they're a really good band and I would invite anybody to check them out, support the next generation of of live music and rock and roll. And it's, uh, they rehearse on the other side of this wall right here. <laughs> I love it. So, How do they find junkbunny.com? Junkbunny. Ooh, good, good question. It's junkbunny one word. Um, uh, I don't know what the, just they could, they could Google it. They're, sure they're on Instagram Google and Facebook and all that yeah. stuff. Junk and Bunny the, band. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. On Lava Republic. Um, yeah. Check them out. And stuff. what about seeing your artwork? How, do, how does people see that? Uh, I have a website, which is creatively in, called johndouglas.com. And uh, it's basically like my portfolio. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in there. There's, you know, if you want, if you just look and want to look at drums, there's pages and pages of drums, and then there's pages of guitars, and then there's fine art, which is the canvas and stuff. And uh, I was working towards, you know, I had a couple of gallery shows, but again, under COVID, you know, uh, that's another business model that's uh, having to revamp how they do business. And that's, you know, the art galleries. So it seems like the arts in particular taking the beating this year. Um, and the cruel twist of that is I think humans now more than ever, we need art, you know, the visual arts and the creative arts and music and uh, you know, Broadway. I mean, it's like, boy, if we ever needed it now we do. And yeah. Calm everybody didn't. down. Hopefully a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't. It's like, this I is know. so cruel. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can get that all that we can get this behind us and not only get back to work, but the, the people that enjoy going to these events and whether it be, uh, you know, an art gallery opening or a play at, your high school or on Broadway or a big concert or a club concert. Let's get going, man. Yeah, man. That's the human it's, experience. It's coming. You know, it, it people it won't, be. people won't stand for not no. having it. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to happen. Um, this ain't life. No, it's not. Life is right. together. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be together. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. you know, we talk about this a lot, Tater and I, you know, I, I've turned into this weird agoraphobic dude. Like I'm stuck in my house you know, scared to go outside, you know, it's like, what, what has happened to me? I don't understand. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. It's not good. Um, one last question before we go, we, uh, you know, I used to be the production manager slash. So I know that your writer included Triscuits <laughs> and diet Mountain Dew. Uh, what's your writer as the drummer of Aerosmith now? <laughs> well, um, the Mountain Dew switched to code red. Mountain uh -oh. Dew. Okay. That's my latest Ooh. thing. All right. So that's pretty exotic. Not yeah. big red down there. You got no, no, no. code no, red, no. Mountain, code red. red. Mountain Dew code red. Uh, Hard not diet. Regular full strength. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I want to challenge, you know, 
uh, I got to let them know who they're dealing with here. Yeah. <laughs> still, still Triscuits <laughs> and chips and salsa. And uh, I'm definitely a, a, a routine. You know, I'm, I, I didn't, I didn't have, obviously I got thrown into this thing. I didn't have a routine of like, of when I should eat and not eat and what I should eat. And once I locked into like, you know, I'm like, I religiously on a show day at 5.30, I have a, a pasta with just tomato sauce right. and, the, and that's it. You know, and I have a salad for lunch. And um, if it was a, a good show and, you know, of course, aren't they all? <laughs> but, you know, then maybe after the show, I'll have a celebratory Mountain Dew Code Red <laughs> or chips and salsa. Yeah. So really, you know, I haven't really changed that much. The big you're, time hasn't. Really you're very simple either, J.D. That's what we love very, about you. Yeah. If you open up that Aerosmith uh, drum work box right now, is, there's a box of Triscuits in there, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. just make I'm kind of concerned. I, I'm pretty sure that there's a big tub of peanut M&Ms too. <laughs> no. In some warehouse in Las Vegas that I'm sure is disgustingly melted into a glob. Oh, yeah, be one big ball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's kind of interesting because we weren't supposed to be gone that long. So That's a great way to end. I love it. <laughs> oh, man, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking your time and, and uh, sharing with us some amazing stories. And, um, you know, I, I am uh, very honored to call you my friend, man. And yeah, thanks, for, thanks thank for coming. Thank you, J.D. Thank you guys. Been been a pleasure swapping stories. Yep. Propaganda. (laughs) It's all propaganda. propaganda. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Take care, man. See ya. I hope to see you in some load in very soon. Hopefully very soon. Exactly. Exactly. Yep.